Okay, welcome ladies. This is Kathy Washira and I'm happy to be back. Uh, this is a video that I'm uh, redoing. I had to redo it because the sound of the last one that I did was not very clear. I think my microphone was off and I was not aware and I pray that today you can all hear me clearly. And I also just want to take this opportunity to welcome all our new viewers and our new subscribers. Karibu sana to Lady in Waiting. Here we learn everything concerning relationships uh, that uh, that are godly and relationships that can hopefully one day lead to marriage because nobody wants to waste their time in life in relationships that are going nowhere. So sometimes it's good to get wisdom so that it helps us to know from right from the beginning what is not going to work and what is going to work. Some of us have to go through all the hard things in life to finally come to realize that God is the only way, you know. So I pray that even as I continue to give you, to share wisdom with you, that we are going to learn something. Whatever is for you, kindly just take it. I know not everything is for everyone, but whatever is for you, I pray that it shall be of help to you. And as the topic uh, says today, I am speaking about excuses, and I say stop the excuses and end the relationship. And I know it sounds very harsh, but I can tell you uh, from my own experience and also as a pastor, uh, uh, dealing and uh, with young people, these are some of the things that I've learned that has kept so many women in bitterness. Most of the women that you meet today, that I, I meet even today, many of them are in bitterness because of relationships that they thought were working, uh, yet the, the, the person or the other person had no plan, had no interest in the relationship, but the person just kept them there. And it's up to us as, as it's up to you as a woman to come to the realization that when something is not working, it is not working. And my prayer is, is for us, especially in Africa, that we can be like our Western sisters who are able to confront an issue. When something is not working, have the courage to just tell yourself, this thing is not working. Let me not stop wasting my time, you know, so that we don't have to go through a lot of pain over and over in life to finally realize, to finally learn, you know. So, and I'm talking about excuses, and I want to let you all of us know that excuses in a relationship are just red flags, you know. And when I'm talking about excuses, I'm talking about excuses why someone is not marrying you, is not proposing, is not taking the relationship to the next step. And even as I say this, I am not speaking about uh, yeah, uh, people who are, you know, those, uh, you know, when we, are, when we finished high school, wherever we are in the world, we are, we are still young. You have no business wanting the relationship to go to any uh, next level. Better still, you have no business being in a relationship. I think when you finish high school and you're in campus, that is a good time to study, you know, know your career, know what you really want to do in life, build yourself so that by the time now you're interested in a relationship that hopefully leads to marriage, you're, you, you're, already, you're already built, you're already settled, you're already establishing yourself, okay? And I'm not saying you have everything going for you, but at least you now know where you're going to life in life. You now know where you want to go. But um, this, this excuse, I'm speaking about people or women who you know, your age is telling you it is the time. You, you, you're done. You, you, you've, you've, uh, uh, you have, uh, you have, uh, you've done, you, you're done with your career or you're, you're in the process of progressing your career. You, you're making your money, you, you, you're in the progress of progressing your business, you now want to get married because there is years, years matter, years matter. That, th these are the kind of people I'm talking about. So you've been in this relationship with this person, you're in your mid-twenties, late-twenties, and you've been in this relationship with this person for years, and they're not saying anything. It's like you're just there. This this is for you. Uh, now, there are two types of excuses that a man can give. And I'm like, there, I'm just saying directly. Because this is something, this is a question that I've gotten from several of you. That's why I'm, I'm just attacking it the way it is. There are two types of excuses that someone can give. I can give one of them, I'll call it unavoidable excuses. Something that has, he, the person, because I'm talking to ladies, even if there's a man, it could also work for you. Unavoidable excuses, and then we have unnecessary excuses unavoidable excuses are obvious you know maybe you've just met someone or you're with someone you've been with someone and they are going through something maybe it's sickness and they have to go for further treatment or they're in treatment they're not in the physical 
or psychological uh, position to even want to propose or even want to take the relationship anywhere because even themselves they are not aware where they are in life that one is unavoidable and i would understand if someone tells you please just wait let us see where this thing is going and my prayer is that you have the patience uh, to wait because remember you also have a choice you know i know it sounds harsh but i'm just saying you also have a choice okay and and it can also it can also be maybe they are studying someone is still in school they are in the university and they're telling you know wait let me finish because i can't concentrate in this marriage and wedding things until i finish you know it's normal for you to wait but after you've waited you they need to say something after that there there there, there are excuses which are which are which are normal or you met someone and you've been with them for a year and maybe the second year they have to go somewhere for further studies and they tell you please wait let me go and come back for me if i was here i would wait why because you know sometimes um you, you can't marry someone and immediately they leave things change someone can go out there they decide they're not coming back or they decide they've changed their mind you know so for me in that kind of matter i would wait let them come back and tell me what they want or let them let them go and now tell me come let us you know so you don't want to commit to something that is unstable so when someone gives you a reason why they cannot take uh, they cannot marry you they, the relationship is not going to another level because of a, of a reason that they have no power over then i would understand but now we have unnecessary reasons reasons that and these are the reasons that most of the people give me someone is telling me wait for my siblings uh, you ask them so what is the status of a relationship and they tell you wait for my siblings to finish school and their siblings they're talking about the last one is in grade four 10 years old for how long you you're already 30 the, the, their sibling the last sibling is in grade four even if they're the ones who are taking care of them financially you know the, this one is in grade four they're 10 years old that means for them to finish school they'll be 18 so you are 30 you're waiting for them you're waiting for someone who is in grade four to reach finish high school that means you by then you'll be 38 years old will this man still want to marry you you know so let, let us look at some of those things so if someone is giving that that is an unnecessary excuse because one them taking care of their of their of their siblings does how does it affect the two of you getting married in fact the better because now you can come in and help him take care of his sibling i'm just saying okay number two someone is telling you and these are just some of the excuses i don't know what kind of excuses someone has given you maybe you can tell us <laughs> you can tell us in the comments someone is saying wait for me to get promoted what if they never get promoted are you not going to get married someone tells you wait for my career to be stable or my business to be stable what if it doesn't get stable what if the business doesn't get stable what if they marry because you know some of these reasons are so temporal because some i have i know so many cases where you people marry where they have very good jobs most of them and as they enter into marriage a few months down the line or a few years down the line one of them loses the job do will they now unmarry and say because now i don't have a job let us unmarry and wait for me to get another job so those are very those are totally unnecessary excuses we don't marry because of jobs so it's good to have a job because people need to eat but that is not the reason why we marry are you getting me no? wait for my uncle to come from abroad to come and bless us what if the uncle does not come are you not going to get married so I, 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 those are just a few i don't know some of the some of the excuses that you've um you've you've, you've gone you've gone through so unavoidable i've told you things that nobody has control over but unnecessary are things that are just stories for me i just call them stories and 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 let me tell you something uh, uh my ladies <laughs> if i can call you when you see these uh, uh unnecessary excuses those are serious red flags because uh when a man wants to marry, they will marry. Let me give you a verse in Proverbs chapter 30. Kindly write it down or you, if you have your Bible, just get your Bible and read. What the wise man, Solomon, who had 300 wives and I don't know, 700 concubines. This is what he wrote, okay? In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 18 to 19. He says this, There are three things that are too amazing for me and four that I do not understand. Number one, he says, the way of an eagle in the sky. Two, the way of a snake on a rock. Three, the way of a ship on the high seas. And four, and the way of a man with a maiden, or the way of a man with a virgin, or the way of a man when he meets the right person. 
Are you getting me? So what I'm trying to tell you, my sister, is when a man meets the right person, they want to marry them. When they want to marry, they marry. So when they start, when a man starts to give you excuses, regardless of how beautiful you are, regardless of how learned you are, regardless of where you come from, what they're trying to tell you is that they are not sure. And because men, you know, men are nice. <laughs> <laughs> most, most men are nice. They will just keep you there. Why? They are not sure. Probably they don't want to break your heart. Probably they are just used to you. So they don't know what it is to be with someone else. But because they, they, they know, because a man, a man thinks with his head. They know when they're not, you're not the person. They know. When you're the person, they know the first time. Are you getting me? So when a man is keeps on giving you excuses that are totally unnecessary, excuses that don't make sense, please, what he's just trying to tell you is that he's not sure. You know, or oh, number two, he could be telling you, you are not the one, but I don't have a better option. I don't have another option. So I will just keep you there until I get another option. And that is why, and I've spoken to very many ladies. That is why sometimes when you have those, when you, you're with those kind of people and you break up with them, probably because of excuse or because of one reason or another, you are so shocked when six months down the line or nine months or one year down the line you hear they're getting married or you're even having a wedding you are shocked you're like but he was with me with 10 years how did he meet this girl just for six months and they're married let me tell you something when a man meets their wife they know it the first day i always most of the people that i i, I, I interact with and, and counsel in marriage even in our church they always tell you i knew she was the one the first time i met her so sometimes when you see all this dragging and and, and dragging is like you you're begging almost begging the man you almost you're almost proposing and you're a lady just know what the man is saying is that he's not sure but he has no option so he's keeping you just uh, uh, as he waits to, to to meet the right person or number two he has just gotten familiar with the relationship because he's receiving all the benefits of a husband and yet he just has a title of a boyfriend you cook for him you wash his clothes you take care of his house you probably live with him you have sex with him so why would he be in a hurry he's, he's gotten familiar with the relationship and that is what i was telling you right from the beginning when you watch my videos we have no business being people's wives and we are girlfriends you know we have no business now i want you to understand as a believer and as a christian Kingdom dating is intentional. As a, as, a, as a believer, if you want to have a relationship that is going to work, or if you decide you want to start it, it must be intentional. We don't, as Christians, we don't just date for no, just for the sake of it, because you're going to get hurt. You're going to, that's why some of us end up getting pregnant. That's why some of us end up getting hurt, because the, the, the datings that we're having are not intentional. You know, so as, as a child of God, your dating or your courting must be intentional. There has to be a reason why you're with this person. And I'm not saying that all the relationships, even the intentional ones work, but at least let it begin by being intentional. In other words, after the, the, the initial dates, the initial, you know, there are those initial dates where, oh, how are you? I have been seeing you in church. I've been seeing you in the office. What, what, what? The person now needs to tell you where you people are going, you know, so that you start working on it. Because I, when, 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 when you look, when most of you can attest with me, when you look at all the relationships that most of the time broke up, there was never discussion of anything serious. It was just those things, you go out, you come back, you, you know, you, for how long? How can someone keep you two, three years? They're not saying anything. You're not going in. Who are you? Where are you going? Where? It, it, it doesn't work like that. Listen, when, when you meet somebody and this person is as interested in you as you are with them, there are some discussions that need to begin immediately. Because what are you waiting for? Listen, in, in, you will never, you know, sometimes I find it so funny when someone tells you, oh, I'm still, I'm getting to know the person. Four years later, you're still getting to know the person. What do you want to know? Four years later, what do you want to know? And know the, the truth of the matter. You will never know somebody until you marry them. Because marriage is the deal break. Marriage is the one that will make you know how someone behaves when they're broke. How they behave when, you, when your child is sick at night and you have to rush that child to hospital. How do they behave when your parents are sick? How will they behave when things are happening, when the children are screaming in the house? So that is when the real person now comes out. Leave these things we do in dates and everybody's wearing their best, putting their best feet in front and every, no. 
it is in mind. So you can never really know somebody 100%. You know, it is when the, the, the challenges of marriage come in is when you now the real person comes out. And I'm not saying it doesn't, it works. Marriage is a challenge, but it works and it's beautiful, you know. So when, when kingdom, kingdom dating should be intentional. It should not just be open, going just open. Otherwise, how many men are you going to date in your life <laughs> before you finally you finally decide on what and i'm saying this i'm saying this because those are some of the things when i when i reach uh, 36 years i asked myself how many how many will you try this and i want for how long and that is why i came to the to the to the point where i told myself no this time i am doing it god's way the part and i told specifically i said this person when i meet him he has to be direct from day one and, and that is exactly what I, from day one, he told me this, this, and this. There was nothing, there, there was nothing that was zigzags. Everything was straight. We knew right from the beginning, this is where we are going. And that is how kingdom relationship, it, it might sound a little bit shady considering the society that we live in. But trust me, that shadiness is what works. <laughs> Praise God. So what do you do when someone keeps giving you excuses you've been in a relationship two years three years they are not saying anything and your ears are going and you know it's us ladies whose ears go men men can marry even at 70 it is us who have years really matter are you getting so what do you do when the excuses are endless just break it just break it as painful as it is it is better to cry in your 20s than to cry in your late 30s and i'm sure some of you listening to me you are even there saying that I wish I'd broken this relationship when I was 28. It is now that I'm 38 that now the, the, the thing is not working. I wish I knew. So it is better to cry. It's better to cry in your 20s than to cry in your 30s. Because 20s days, you can recover very quickly. You know, go back, you know, and, and, and go back to the dating scene again. So uh, just break it. Because the, the good thing of breaking a relationship, and I've seen how it has worked for some people, is this. One, if the man is serious, that will be a wake-up call for him. He will say, hey, so this girl is going to go. I better style up, you know, and he will do the right thing. But if he was not serious, he, for him it will be good. Thank you. In his heart he will be saying, thank you for doing it for me. It will, I didn't know how to do it, you know. So that, that is what just, just end it. As painful as it is, just end it. Because staying there any longer, staying in a relationship that is going nowhere any longer will not change the narrative. It will not, my sister. You know, it will not change the narrative. The end is still the same. It is heartbreak. But it is better you do it early. Are you getting me? So let us not waste time with, 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 in relationships with people who are not taking us anywhere. And, and listen, it's not that the man is bad. The man is not bad. It's not that you're not the one. And trust me, you, you are the one for someone else. So the only way that other person will find you is when you're free from this one who you are who who is holding on to you or who is just keeping you there, you know. So just just be free. I I got married because I freed myself from things that had gotten myself entangled that were not going anywhere. Are you getting me? So get uh, just end it. I I know I sound very bad, but <laughs> just end it. Stop wasting your time. End it, continue building yourself, continue building your career, continue doing your business. The right man is going to come because God has the right person for you. And my prayer for you, even as we end today, that may you get the courage to just make that right decision in Jesus' mighty name and end it. Because there is somebody for you who will see you the first day, the first time they will see you or the first time they, they might, maybe they've been seeing you. But maybe the first time they will open their mouth to speak, they will say, you are now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I will call you my wife. Hmm. So, amen. So don't waste your time on things that with stories, all those stories. I don't know what kind of stories you've been given, but you can share with us uh, in, in, in the comments uh, below. Otherwise, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. My contacts are there in case you need someone to talk to. Uh, you can always uh, contact me. And I hope to see you in the next video. In Jesus' mighty name, goodbye.